Once upon a time, a spacecraft named Rosetta was launched into the night sky. A long, long journey lay ahead of her to uncover the mysteries of our solar system. Rosetta carried a little passenger, the lander Philae. It had taken many, many years to dream up this mission. And now, on the 2nd of March, 2004, Rosetta was on her way to the far-off comet 67P churyumov gerasimenko The adventure of Rosetta and Philae was inspired by stories they heard from Grandfather Giotto. Long, long ago, men and women on Earth gazed in wonder at comets that appeared in the sky. What were these mysterious objects? Some thought they might be caused by Earth breathing into the sky, but no one knew for sure. Until a Danish astronomer named Tycho Brahe discovered that comets are very far away, much, much further from Earth than the Moon. How could we learn more about these distant objects? By trying to get close to them. And getting close to a comet was exactly what Rosetta and Philae planned to do. But before they got to theirs, they had a lot to prepare. They listened in awe as Giotto told them about a handful of spacecraft that had visited other comets before them. I was one of the lucky spacecraft to fly very close to the most famous comet of all, Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet is very special. It is named after Edmund Halley, who discovered that many comets come back regularly to our sky. He predicted that one of those comets would return after 76 years. And it did! Time and time again, Halley's Comet has come back right on schedule every time. The last time, in 1986, I was there. Together with a bunch of friends from lots of other countries, we set off to welcome this legendary comet. I was the bravest of all and flew less than 600 kilometers from the comet's nucleus. It was a harsh place, but the sight was amazing, and I sent pictures back home. Many more spacecraft have gone looking for comets after us, like your cousin Stardust, who flew by Comet 81P Wilt, collected dust particles from the shiny tail, and sent them back home to be studied. Or one of your other cousins, Deep Impact, who made a crater in Comet 9P Temple to see what's under the surface. Stardust flew by this comet a few years later to look at this famous crater. We have learned a lot about comets, but much more is still to be discovered. Comets hold many secrets about the early days of our solar system. How did planets form? How did water arrive on Earth? And you, Rosetta and Philae, are going to find out by doing what no space probe has ever attempted. Orbit a comet and land on it. Rosetta and Philae had a historic mission ahead of them, but the journey would be very long. It would take them over 10 years, and they would have to overcome many challenges before they reached their destination. Rosetta needed lots of energy to get to the comet, and got some from Earth and Mars by flying around them, seeing some beautiful sights. Along the way, she and Philae also went to places spacecraft hadn't visited before. Rosetta found a diamond-shaped object, the asteroid Steins, and took amazing pictures for everyone on Earth to see. The diamond disappeared as the spacecraft sped on. Further along the way, a giant appeared, Lutetia, an ancient rock 100 kilometers tall and 100 kilometers wide with big craters on the surface. Rosetta sent more pictures home of the amazing encounter. This was still only the beginning of the adventure. 
But far from the energy of the sun, Rosetta was very tired and needed to rest. Still traveling through space, she and Philae fell into a deep sleep, a sleep lasting for two years, seven months, and 12 days. Then on the 20th of January, 2014, with the help of everyone on Earth shouting, wake up, Rosetta, she opened her eyes and let everyone back home know she was okay. There was much celebration, and Rosetta's team quickly set to work, checking her health after the long slumber. There was still a long way to travel to reach the comet, but Rosetta had plenty to do. There was no time to lose. All of the experiments that were packed on board had to be woken up, along with the lander, Philae. There was still some way to travel before they reached the comet, and Philae in particular was impatient to arrive. Rosetta, are we there yet? Are we there yet? When they got to the comet, they would find out all about its surface and about the dust and gas around it. And the scientists back home would fit all these pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle to learn about how comets work. Are we there yet? But it would still take them a few months before they'd reach Comet 67P Kiryumov Gerasimenko. Before long, Rosetta was able to see the comet in the distance. She was getting closer and closer, but there were still many challenges ahead. The route to the comet was complicated, and she had to carry out some difficult maneuvers. She had to change her speed to match the comets, otherwise she would fly past. One false move and she might not make it. There were ten maneuvers to complete, but Rosetta was determined. As she checked them off one by one, the comet got closer and closer. It was the most wonderful sight that Rosetta had ever seen. There was only a little way to go now, but she knew that once she got there, there would be no time for rest. She and Philae had the most important jobs of their entire lives ahead of them. Rosetta's exciting mission was to follow the comet as it traveled around the sun. She would learn all about the comet and how it changes as it gets warmer and warmer, while Philae would visit the surface. But as she got closer, Rosetta realized that the comet was much more complex than people had first thought using telescopes from far away. It almost looked like two comets stuck together and from some angles, its shape was really rather strange. It was the beginning of August, and Rosetta had to maneuver several times to get closer and closer to the comet. The nearer Rosetta got to the strange world, the more wonders she discovered on its surface. There were craters, cliffs, and boulders the size of houses. Rosetta spent many weeks studying the surface of the comet, sending lots of information back to Earth. She also started to analyze the dust and gas around the comet. But there was always one question in the back of her mind. Where was Philae going to land? No spacecraft had ever attempted to make a soft touchdown on a comet. Philae started to pick some of his favorite spots on the comet. But Rosetta had to check with the experts back home. They thought long and hard, and eventually found the best spot for Philae to land. Then Rosetta had to plan the exact route around the comet to make sure that Philae would land in the right place. Soon it was time for Philae to make the final preparations for his great adventure. He checked that he had everything he needed to land on the comet. Finally, the moment everyone had been waiting for arrived. As the world held its breath on the 12th of November, 2014, Rosetta moved into the exact position needed to make sure Philae would reach the landing site. Philae and Rosetta were sad to be going their separate ways, but excited at the same time, because this was what they had been waiting to do. Philae was away. 
It would take seven hours to reach the surface, but Philae wanted to get started on his measurements right away. He could soon see the surface in incredible detail, and the moment he had been dreaming of had finally arrived. He had reached the surface of the comet. But all was not right. His harpoons did not fire. Fine realized he couldn't relax yet. He was rising from the surface again. Philae was scared he might drift off the comet completely. This was not in the plan. But eventually, he came back down again. <sighs> However, as he looked around, he realized he had landed in a completely unexpected location. Pile immediately set to work on studying his new home. It took him just over two days to conduct all the experiments he had brought with him. After all his hard work, Philae began to feel tired, so he made sure to send all the data he had collected back to Rosetta. As the sun set over Philae's new home, he fell into a deep sleep, safe in the knowledge that he did his main job well, that his family of comet-chasing heroes would be proud of his achievement. Who knows? Perhaps one day, enough sunlight would fall on his new landing site and wake him up. Meanwhile, Rosetta continued studying the comet, learning new and wonderful things as she followed it on its journey through the solar system. It measured four kilometers across, and from the gravitational pull that Rosetta felt, she could calculate the mass of the comet, 10 billion tons. Although the comet looked like a giant rock, it was made of something much lighter, so much so that it would float on water. Rosetta collected samples of the gas and dust that streamed into space in order to learn more about what the comet was made of and where in the solar system it was born. One of the most important questions scientists back home wanted to answer was where Earth's water came from. Could it have come from comets and asteroids billions of years ago? Rosetta was surprised to discover that the water vapor flowing away from her comet had a different flavor to Earth's oceans. The scientists wondered what it would mean for their theories of how the solar system evolved. There were many other types of gases too, and it smelled like a weird mixture of rotten eggs, horse tables, and marzipan. Rosetta also collected thousands and thousands of dust grains, small and large. Some of them seemed very fluffy, like the head of a dandelion. As the days and weeks passed, the comet looked more and more spectacular. Rosetta flew closer to get a better look, but there she found herself surrounded by a lot of dust. Although it wasn't as dangerous as when Grandfather Giotto flew past Comet Halley at high speed many years ago, Rosetta still became disoriented and almost lost her way, so decided to continue her work from a safer distance. Rosetta began to see the surface of the comet changing as they got nearer to the sun. She saw jets of dust coming out of pits and patches of ice being revealed. Even though the comet was becoming more active, it was still quite cold on the surface. Rosetta measured temperatures around minus 100 degrees Celsius, and it was even colder underneath. Thinking about the cold, she worried about Philae, who had been asleep for several months. She didn't even know exactly where he had finally landed, and wondered whether there was enough sunlight there to recharge his batteries. Then, one Saturday in June, 2015, she received a phone call. It was Philae. He was awake. She quickly told everyone on Earth. Rosetta wanted to tell Philae all that had happened while he had been asleep and the many exciting things she had learned about the comet, but the connection wasn't very good. 
It was very frustrating, and Rosetta had to move to different locations to try to find the best spot for a better connection. Philae hoped he would soon be able to do more experiments on the comet's surface, while Rosetta studied it from afar. As the comet reached its closest point to the Sun on the 13th of August, Rosetta and Philae were very excited to witness this once-in-a-lifetime event. Rosetta saw more and more gas and dust streaming from the comet's surface. At that time, she had to keep at a safe distance because the comet was so active and the environment was very dusty. Rosetta knew that astronomers back on Earth were also observing the comet, and she enjoyed seeing the images of how it looked from afar. It made her realize just how vast the comet's tail was, over 10 million kilometers. She explored some of the tail herself on excursions that took her over a thousand kilometers from the nucleus. There, she studied how the stream of charged particles flowing from the sun affects the comet. Even though Rosetta was far away, she often thought of Philae, whom she had not heard from since before their closest approach to the sun. She hoped that he had also enjoyed the view on the comet when it was most active. Later, as they moved back towards the outer solar system, the comet became less active and it was finally safe for Rosetta to get closer again. Whenever she flew over Philae's home, she listened out for any signals from him. She wanted to tell him about the amazing discoveries that the scientists back home had made using the data he had collected down on the comet. They had found the surface to be much harder than expected and that the comet contained many ingredients, including some complex molecules that could be the building blocks of life as we know it on Earth. Even though Rosetta could not see or hear Philae, she tried to make contact with him just in case he was listening. But unfortunately, they could not seem to get connected. Perhaps Philae had fallen back into a deep sleep, or maybe his radio was broken, but she was still very proud of him. After all, he had accomplished so many of his important tasks on the comet, and he was understandably tired. Rosetta, too, had made many exciting discoveries. She found patches of water ice on the surface of the comet and witnessed how the ice, heated by sunlight during the day, turned into gas and escaped into space, while new ice formed again every night. Besides water, Rosetta found many other molecules as she studied the atmosphere of the comet, including lots of oxygen. Scientists were very surprised to find so much. They thought that most of the oxygen would have reacted with other atoms. But perhaps it had been locked into the ice when the comet formed 4.6 billion years ago. The scientists were excited by what this discovery could tell them about the history of the solar system. By looking carefully at pictures taken by Rosetta, they also figured out how the comet got its curious shape. It likely happened when two smaller comets slowly crashed into each other billions of years ago. The scientists had also long wondered how the comet looks like from the inside. To find out, they studied the radio beams that Rosetta and Philae had sent to one another through the comet. They also measured how the signals that Rosetta sent back to Earth changed as the comet's gravity gently tugged on her while she flew around it. These experiments showed that the comet had no caverns under the surface larger than 100 meters. In fact, it was made up of a mix of loosely packed dust and ice grains on the inside. The comet was fluffy under its hard crust. Scientists also came to understand that comets were made of the dusty and icy material left over after the planets were formed, and so they contained some of the oldest and best preserved material from the birth of our solar system. Rosetta had made even more remarkable discoveries. 
she found ingredients that were crucial for the origin of life on Earth. Perhaps comets had helped seed the Earth with these important ingredients when our planet was still very young. Scientists would definitely be busy analyzing Rosetta's findings for decades. Her mission had been a huge success. After a long search, she had even managed to find the strange place where Philae had ended up, fast asleep in a dark corner of the comet. But now, once again far from the sun, Rosetta was not generating very much power and soon would not have enough to carry out her investigations. She could go back to sleep, but instead decided to undertake one last ambitious challenge. She was going to follow in Philae's footsteps and land on the comet. Rosetta was tired after 12 and a half years traveling through space, but she was very excited about her last tasks. She would finally see up close some of the amazing sights she had been observing from a distance for the past two years. And she'd get to sample the comet's gases closer than she had ever dared to go before. It would not be easy, but the experts back home had everything figured out and the date was set. Rosetta would be targeting a really interesting place on the head of the comet. She wasn't going to be able to talk to Earth ever again once she was on the comet's surface. After all, she was never designed to land. So she would have to send back her last images and data as quickly as possible before saying her final goodbyes. Even though her incredible journey was nearly complete, she knew that just like the other comet explorers that had gone before her, the legacy of her amazing mission would live on forever. She felt lucky to have had so many friends and hoped they would still think about her and Philae from time to time. Finally, after 786 days at the comet, the last day of her extraordinary adventure arrived. On the 30th of September, 2016, Rosetta started her descent to the surface of the comet. She made unique measurements and took many close-up photos of the wonderful sights, thinking of the future scientific discoveries to come before she touched down on the comet for her well-deserved rest. So ends the amazing adventure of our two extraordinary explorers, Rosetta and Philae, at Comet 67P. Farewell, dear friends. We found them. <laughs>